China is undertaking an ambitious endeavor, the world's largest water diversion project, as a bold defiance against nature itself. By constructing an extensive network of artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels spanning thousands of kilometers, the country's objective is to transport fresh water to its arid industrial hubs in the northern regions. This video delves into the controversial South to North Water Diversion Project, exploring its cost, motives, environmental impacts, and whether it will truly bring benefits to the Chinese populace. China has a long history of being influenced by its geographical features, which have both benefited and challenged the nation. The eastern part of China, nourished by the Yangtze and Yellow River systems, has been a hub of civilization for thousands of years due to its fertile floodplains that can sustain a large population. However, the northern and far western regions are characterized by dry and mountainous landscapes, including deserts like the Taklamakan and Gobi making these areas sparsely populated and unsuitable for agriculture. Interestingly, 94% of China's population resides east of an imaginary line dividing the country into these contrasting halves. As China experienced remarkable growth in the mid-20th century, cities in the northern region, like Beijing, faced challenges in meeting the increasing water demands. Groundwater, the main water source, became overexploited due to urban and industrial expansion. Additionally, desertification, largely caused by human activities such as deforestation and climate change, exacerbated the water scarcity issue. To address this emerging crisis, Mao Zedong proposed in 1952 the ambitious idea of transferring water from the water-abundant south to the arid north. This proposal laid the foundation for the South-North Water Transfer Project, approved in 2002 after decades of meticulous planning. The project aims to create a network of aqueducts, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams, known as the Eastern, Central, and Western Routes, to channel fresh water from the South to sustain the Northern regions and their growing population. The Eastern Route of the ambitious Water Transfer Project commences its journey near Yangzhou, close to the Yangtze River, via a large, aging pumping station that propels the water onto the Jinghong Grand Canal, an impressive man-made waterway. After passing through an underground tunnel beneath the Yellow River, the water is then conveyed through a series of aqueducts to reach the coastal city of Tianjin, located northwest of the capital Beijing. Covering a total distance of more than 1,100 kilometers, the Eastern Route's construction began in 2002 with an initial target to supply fresh water to Tianjin by 2013. However, numerous construction delays extended the timeline by over four years. Eventually, in 2017, approximately 1 billion cubic meters of water annually reached Tianjin, providing a direct benefit to around 10 million residents in the city. Contrary to the eastern route, the central route faced greater challenges as it lacked pre-existing infrastructure to divert water. Its starting point is the Danjiangku Reservoir, necessitating the elevation of the Danjiangku Dam by about 15 meters to enable downstream water flow towards the north without the need for pumping stations. This elevation resulted in the displacement of over 300,000 people from Hebei and Henan to make way for the canals and expanded reservoirs. The central route primarily consists of artificial canals and aqueducts that traverse the Chinese central plain. One remarkable feature is the Shahe Aqueduct, stretching over 12 kilometers above the Shahe River. Eventually, the central route reaches its destination, the capital city of Beijing. The construction of the central route, which spans over 1,200 kilometers, was completed in 2014. However, upon its completion, Around one-third of the water from the Han River was diverted, leading to significant challenges for the millions of people who depended on it for fresh water. In response, the Chinese government announced in July 2022 the construction of an extensive underground tunnel that would run one kilometer below the surface. This tunnel would link the Three Gorges Dam to the Han River and ultimately connect to the central route, reaching up to Beijing. Once finished, this groundbreaking tunnel would become the longest and deepest artificial waterway ever built, 
with a capacity to transfer approximately 12 cubic kilometers of water annually by 2030, which is about a third of the Three Gorges reservoir capacity. In contrast to the completed central route, the western route of China's south-north water transfer project is currently in the planning stage and poses the most formidable challenges. The ambitious plan involves creating a network of waterways and tunnels to connect the Yangtze River to the Yellow River crossing the challenging terrain of the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau, which lies 3 to 5 kilometers above sea level. The complex topography and harsh climate make this undertaking extremely difficult, and engineers would even need to carve through mountains to establish the route. The western route's expected completion is set for the year 2050, and once operational, it is projected to deliver as much as 17 cubic kilometers of freshwater annually to the northern Chinese provinces. Such a completed route could serve a population of nearly 100 million people along its course. While there have been unofficial discussions in the past about the western route diverting water from transboundary rivers like the Brahmaputra and Mekong, it has never been an official part of the project. Nevertheless, India has expressed concerns about China's potential exploitation of the Brahmaputra River. The Indian government expressed concern over China's ability to control the flow of the river, considering it a potential issue. Meanwhile, despite the South-North Water Transfer Project not being fully completed, the Chinese government views it as a significant success, benefiting approximately 140 million citizens in water-scarce regions, as reported by Chinese state media. However, there are differing opinions among local and provincial Chinese authorities. Southern upstream provinces like Sichuan and Hubei oppose redirecting the Yangtze's flow to the north, fearing it will impact water security and hydropower. Conversely, western provinces such as Gansu and Qinghai believe the project will bring much-needed socio-economic and agricultural stability to their regions. Nevertheless, the South-North Water Transfer Project has raised concerns among local and international environmentalists. As an artificial waterway that disrupts the natural west-to-east flow of China's rivers, hundreds of natural rivers have been interrupted, and some have dried up entirely due to the construction of canals. Over the course of the project, 600 rivers have already disappeared, while industrial waste and sewage have polluted the artificial rivers. The lack of water treatment facilities along the project's path exacerbates these issues. Experts have warned about potential consequences, such as the backflow of seawater from the Yellow Sea into coastal Chinese cities like Shanghai and Nantong, leading to a potential water crisis. Environmental concerns also hinder the planning of the Western Route, which involves constructing tunnels through a mountainous and seismically active region posing risks of landslides and environmental damage. The South-North Water Transfer Project, though two-thirds complete, has come at a significant financial, environmental, social, and economic cost, estimated to be around USD 62 billion. The original goal of supplying clean water to China's north is yet to be fully realized, and the project's maintenance costs for its extensive infrastructure are yet to be considered. What is your opinion regarding the South-North Water Transfer Project? Do you believe that the advantages of the project outweigh its environmental drawbacks? Should the construction of the Western Route still proceed? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. If you're interested in exploring other massive projects, don't forget to watch our video on the biggest megaprojects in the world. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.